Hello fellow intelligent investors, my name is René Zellmann and today I want to talk about Howard Marks' latest memo. Over the last couple of years Marks has released some excellent pieces of writing, but I think his latest memo is possibly the best memo he has ever released. With 18 pages it is quite long however and in this video I will try to summarize some of his core ideas and share my key takeaways or key learnings from the memo. Have you ever wondered how you can make your hard-earned money work for you? Have you ever dreamed of building generational wealth and leaving a legacy? My name is René Zellman and I'll teach you how you can manage and invest your money with confidence, a long-term vision and without losing your mind. Join me on my journey of intelligent investing and learn how smart people can compound their money effectively and accumulate wealth. All right. I just started this channel three months ago or so. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to support me on this journey. And one of my goals for this YouTube, YouTube channel for this new year is actually to try to keep the videos a little shorter if possible. I'm aiming for around 10 to 15 minutes per video. And that is why I have decided to actually split this summary of Mark's memo into various parts. So this is actually the first video of a three part video series. And if you want to watch the next two videos about Howard Marks as well, hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. So maybe we should start with who is Howard Marks in the first place? Well, as I assume that most of you are familiar with him, but for those who aren't, he's mainly known for co-founding Oak Tree Capital, which is basically an alternative asset management firm with over, I think, $120 billion under, in assets under management. And Marx is certainly a very well-respected investor. When he speaks or writes something, people listen to him. And that's because he has successfully weathered many market cycles over the last 40 to 50 years. And in particular, Marx is admired by the investment community for his memos, which he periodically releases on his website, and in which he details his investment strategies and shares his thoughts regarding the investment landscape or the economy in general. And as I said, these memos are publicly available on the Oak Tree website and they are for free. So I can only encourage you to read every single one of them because it, I think it's quite an educational experience. I think in a way the experience is actually similar to reading Buffett shareholder letters, which is also highly recommended. It will take time, but it will be totally worth it. And in addition, Howard Marks memos are actually also available in a podcast format. So if you are commuting to work, this would also be an alternative option. Now, as I've pointed out, I think the latest memo we published in January of this year and titled Something of Value might be the best piece of writing he has ever published. I think it's truly a masterpiece. And so let me share one of my key takeaways now. All right. I think the first point Marx makes is that value investing doesn't have to be about low valuation metrics. In fact, he argues that the traditional style of classic value investing is no longer likely to produce any sustainable edge on its own. And that's because the world today has gotten much more complex and any edge a uh, classic or traditional value investor might have had in the past is quantified away nowadays. But what does he mean by classic value investing, by a classic traditional value investing style? Well, he first and foremost refers to an investment style that focuses on low price to earnings ratios or low price to book multiples. And so an investor, a traditional investor, is looking for real statistical bargains. These old school value investors primarily make money when the gap between price and value closes. And not so much because of the performance of the underlying business, the growth of the underlying business. And just as a reminder here, Multiple expansion on the one hand and organic growth on the other hand are the two main drivers of your returns. And classic value investors performance relies more on the former source of return. And in his memo, Marx also refers to Ben Graham, the father of value investing and his books, Security Analysis and The Intelligent Investors, which in a way can be considered the Bibles of value investing. And Marx argues that Graham's investment style relied on some fixed formulas to arrive at some kind of measure of statistical cheapness. 
And if you have watched my previous video on the price to book ratio, for instance, you should be familiar with the so-called Graham number or the Graham multiplier. This ratio is defined as the PE ratio multiplied by the price to book ratio. And according to Graham, should be no greater than 22.5. In his latest memo, Marx argues that back in the days of Graham and maybe in Buffett's early days, classic value investors could successfully apply these principles because they could easily find many companies that are trading or were trading at enormous discounts to their liquidation value. And as they could find plenty of opportunities in that realm, they were successful. And that was possible because there wasn't much competition. No one really paid attention to these bargain opportunities. But in today's world this is no longer possible and as I told or pointed out earlier any statistical cheapness will be quantified away quite quickly. Here's how Howard Marks describes this development. Fast forward to today and everything has changed. The investment industry is widely competitive with tens of thousands of funds managing trillions of dollars. Information is incredibly ubiquitous with seemingly endless amounts of data. Not to mention books, articles, blogs and podcasts about investment methodologies and specific stock research. Available on your mobile phone in seconds. And not only is information broadly available and easily accessed, but billions of dollars are spent annually on specialized data and computer systems designed to suss out and act on any discernible dislocation in the marketplace. I think classic or deep value investors will have to sell their holdings much more frequently than a growth-oriented compounder investor and thus will constantly have to look for new bargains. And here Howard Marks adds that this will obviously become harder and harder nowadays because we, as we just said, there are fewer of such bargains available like these no-brainer investments. He wrote, in the past bargains could be available for the picking based on readily observable data and basic analysis. Today it seems foolish to think that such thing could be found with any level of frequency. Thus, in the world we live in today, investing on the basis of road formulas and readily available fundamental quantitative metrics should not be particularly profitable. Now the obvious question is, if value investors can no longer outperform based on quantitative valuation multiples, What's the best way to approach investing in the 21st century? Well, Howard Marks basically argues that value can be found in many forms. Value investing doesn't have to mean that you have to find investments that carry a low valuation multiple. And a high valuation multiple doesn't necessarily imply that a stock or a security is overpriced. Now, in fact, a business trading at a high multiple might be the superior investment as it indicates higher growth prospects and maybe also superior business quality. By contrast, classic value investing focused on stocks that trade at extremely low multiples can in fact, to, can in fact lead to so-called value traps. So if a stock carries a low valuation multiple, there's a good chance that the stock actually deserves to trade at a low multiple. Maybe their core business is declining. Maybe the company carries a lot of debt. Maybe the management has shown that they are poor capital allocators. There are many different options. Let me quote another famous investor in this context, namely Preston Athey. He wrote, the best way to avoid a value trap is to ask the obvious question. If this stock is so cheap, why is it cheap? The cheaper it is, the more the market is telling you that there's something wrong. If that's the case and you're still intrigued, you better dig really deep. So what Howard Marks essentially wants to point out in his latest memo is that the distinction between growth and value investing that is often found in mainstream media in particular doesn't serve anyone any good. And he refers to it as the false dichotomy of value and growth. Value simply means paying less for something than it is worth. And the worth of an asset is determined by its future cash flows and so also by its future growth. And that doesn't mean that a stock, stock that is optically expensive and trading at a high multiple is not cheap in absolute terms. If a business can continue to grow at high rates for a sustained period of time 
An optically expensive stock can indeed be ridiculously cheap. That's why Marx, just like me, likes discounted cash flow methods to value businesses. Because they allow you to factor in future growth of cash flows. And based on your assumptions, you get an estimate of a company's intrinsic worth. Here's what he wrote in the latest memo. Cash flows are estimated as far into the future as possible and discounted back to their present value using a discount rate made up of the prevailing risk-free rate, usually the yield on US treasuries, plus a premium to compensate for their uncertain nature. There are a lot of common valuation metrics like the ratio of price to sales or to earnings, but they are largely subsumed by the discounted cash flow or DCF method. Now, determining this value in practice is quite challenging and the key to success lies not in the ability to perform a mathematical calculation, but rather in making superior judgments regarding the relevant inputs. Simply put, the DCF method is the main tool of all value investors in the effort to make investment decisions based on companies' long-term fundamentals. So, I think you should not artificially narrow down the number of potential investments based on multiples alone. In fact, I think this is why screeners, so screeners to find investment ideas, are somewhat suboptimal. And Howard Marks agrees with me here. He points out that the performance of traditional value investing ha has largely lacked that performance of growth investing over the past decade and even beyond, and massively so obviously in 2020. He concludes, the fact that a company grows rapidly relies on intangibles such as technology for its success and or has a high PE ratio shouldn't mean it can't be invested in on the basis of intrinsic value. And if you want to see how one can apply a DCF, you can check out my latest video in which I ran a so-called reverse DCF for Tesla stock. There's actually a term for the approach Howard Marx describes and that I just described in the last couple of minutes. In a way, the approach he describes is a hybrid style of investing and it is referred to as growth at reasonable price investing, short GARP or GARP. And this philosophy basically plants components of value and growth investing into one investment philosophy. And investors that believe in this hybrid style of investing are looking to buy companies that have the potential to grow at a fast pace but they still try to make sure that they don't overpay for the stock and that the stock is trading below its intrinsic value. And that's already it for the video today. I hope you learned something. And if you want to learn more about Howard Marks, insights and my thoughts on what he wrote in his latest memo, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss part two and three of this video series. May your finances and investments prosper. Good luck.